Hallelujah. Oh, let us bless the Most High. We magnify you, Father. It is because of you we live. Giving honor this day unto the holy Malachi, the mystery illumined revealer, his prophet Mele Eshadar, my beloved. Our spiritual father, the founder and leader of Tabernacle of Newton Bethel. Oh, holy people, bless him. I greet you all in love, family of Tan Bethia, here and in Cush. I appreciate this time that we are about to commence in glory. Hallelujah. Every heart right now be lifted as we bow our heads and come before the Most High in prayer. I understand, O oh Holy One. Thou art the great I am. Thou hast given unto us thy only begotten Son to guide us, to show us, to lead us, that we would come to know you, Father. You have blessed us in your word that it translates and transmutes, transforms our very spirit by way of our mind and our very body. Hallelujah, Father. To you we give honor and glory. To you we are partakers of the covenant because you made it so that you would call us back from whence we were out of the ditch out of the miry clay you brought us to you you called us and we hearkened and we serve thee this day and we honor you O Father, for you are making it known by way of Yeshaya, O Holy Yahuwah. The way we must go, how we must go, how we must present ourselves as holy and acceptable, living before you, pleasing in your sight. We glorify, magnify you this day, O Holy One. Bless thy mighty name. We call it so done that we are the elect remnant gathered from the four corners of the earth. We call it so done. We are your children. Laka. Let us bless the Most High. So shall it be as it is said. So it is received. So it is done. The word is born. Born is the word of Yah in me. Come on and praise him. Worship the Father. Hallelujah. Lord, please come with me. Take your seats and open your Bible. The word of the Most High to the book of Matthew. We're going to come now. As you know, we are in troubling times because it has been made known from the prophets of old, through the word, through his apostles, and we have been taught a well-rounded word by the prophet Eshadar for decades now to prepare ourselves for what indeed is coming. We can rejoice in the joy of the Almighty. And we can be glad in that rejoicing. Oh, yes. But we also must make haste to be ready in that hour, in that season, for when the call is made that we will not fall, holy elect remnant, but we shall stand in the holy place with a fortitude and a strength 
I want you to read with me. Come to book of Matthew, chapter 24. Before we begin to read, I caution you to be perceptive in the word. I unction you to be discerning with me as the Spirit of the Father leads this vessel to present unto you the word this hour. We begin at a key verse, verse 36. Immediately we are in the word. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only, saith Messiah, Yeshua. But as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, unto that day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. I want to remind you, when Messiah is reminding us of the days of Noah, what was taking place? We just read what Yeshua said. They were giving unto marriage. They were partaking of what? Jubilant celebration of their vain selves, having no cares for the concerns of the Most High but only concerns for themselves. And this is what Messiah is speaking of, that in that day that took place in Noah, they were preoccupied only with themselves. They were gods unto themselves. Their belly were their gods. Their concerns in the natural were their gods. But he also warns that in the day that is soon to come, so shall it be as if it were the time of Noah, which speaks of right now. You can behold and you are a witness to the very lack of concern for the word. The religious have increased. The so-called devil's havens are so populated with religious folk that have no regard for righteousness but dare to declare that they are saved and they know the word of the Most High and they know it not. We know what the scripture says, that the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. They're dead in their spirit. They have no life of the Most High, for the spirit of the Father liveth not in them. Now I know that you are familiar, but I want to remind you I came before you in a series of teachings, warning of the perilous times that we are in and shall indeed encounter even more so. The warnings that are written in the scripture, there are prophecies that have come to pass that are written of in the book called the Bible. And there are prophecies declared and uttered by the revealer of the mystery illumined, the prophet Eshadar, that have come to pass concerning these days and the days that we have witnessed even in the land of Cush. It was prophesied nearly approximately 15 years ago at the appointed hour of the door of the eighth day that certain things would take place in the land of Cush known as Ethiopia. And I say unto you, just as the prophet declared it, it has come to pass. When no one would receive it or believe it that did not know him. For those that know him know that a word from the father by way of the prophet can never fail. And he uttered that Cush would become wealthy and there would be increase in the land and there will be much building up and this would be for the ushering in of the elect remnant 
and over the last decade and a half, just as it was declared, it has happened. There are now systems in place that never existed. There is wealth that can be seen that was never even imagined in the minds of the citizens of Ethiopia at that time. We are in this hour where we shall see, as long as you live, you shall see the coming of the Almighty. You shall see him. Glory, oh, hallelujah, Father. There is this desire for you, beloved, that when you read these words in verse 38, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And verse 39, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. There are billions of souls on this planet and they are entrapped in deception, slaves to deception. And when I came before you and I imparted unto you to warn you that the cloudedness of the mind, that the veil would come off, that the elect remnant would see what is around, that we live in this world and we are not of it. I wasn't coming before you just giving you information. I was giving you necessary foundational information to peel away the layers that you could see, the world that you abide in but that you are not partakers of, that you not be caught up in the tide or the current of the ways of the world. For we know that the children of Israel were warned many times and they disobeyed many times and the judgment of Israel came to pass. They displeased the father so that he scattered them in all the earth. No other people have been scattered as the Hebrew Israelite, the children of Israel. And we are that children today. And we are abiding in righteousness and learning and growing and ascending in the Father as we must to give him what he wants because he will have who and what he wants. The Father will have who and what he wants. He demands it. <laughs> Hallelujah! But there is a deception in the land and not just the land called America. The deception goes from America to Europe, to South Africa, to Asia, to all parts of the globe. If America is deceived, then what more those who follow her? I imparted unto you by way of the leading of the Most High certain things that were right in front of our faces from politics, the government, to the music industry, to television and movies. You come and you come and you come and now that you've come, you look out and you see deception. And you see that the religious and the powers that be are trying and are controlling the masses and they are slaves and know it not. But we are not called to be slaves of deception. We are to be made free and we are free by way of Yeshia who came to redeem us. And we shall remain this way and we must make sure that our children's children stay free by way of their mind, by way of their spirit, and that their bodies ascend as we know we are ordained to do, that in that great day that comes we shall stand. Because this scripture speaks about what many refer to as the rapture, the 
catching up or the catching away. But I want to show you. They missed it. And they're still missing it. But the elect have not. Who have been taught from the mind of the Most High by way of the realer of the mystery illumined. The chamber that comes before us. We know we are going to go through tribulation. And we must overcome. In order to overcome, you must be made aware. So I imparted unto you necessary information showing you the dollar, teaching you about the governments and the global elite, and they're popularly known as the Illuminati, as they refer to themselves as the enlightened ones. And they hide in a Kabbalistic, ritualistic mysticism that borrows and lends from systems and symbols that go far back to Egypt, to the so-called Khazarian Jews. They are perpetrators of religion to sweep away a people when they themselves don't believe in the Most High. But as long as there are people willing to be religious and worship an idol, they will give them that icon. They will give them that celebrity singer. They will give him or her the movie actress or actor to follow and to worship the athlete to see as a role model who is neither godly nor righteous. They have infiltrated so that even the very elect, if not enlightened by his spirit and taught by his prophet, they too, we too, could have been deceived, but we are no longer deceived. Our eyes of the mind, so to speak, are wide open. The deception is so vast all you must do is root yourself in this word. That's all you must do. And be careful that you take not on the ways of the world, whether you realize it or not. And some didn't realize that the programs you were watching were programmed to penetrate your consciousness and your subconsciousness to move and influence you away from the word of the Most High. And our children were being attacked and are still being attacked in the school system and in the television and in the music. And you who are more advanced are more sound and aware But what's coming in these days right now like never before because of technology. Our children must be made aware to deflect and protect the house, this house. You also must protect this house. We are of the household of faith and we cannot be denied. If we go back and come to verse 29, we read verse 36, this is the part that deception houses don't want a people to know. But it's clearly written, and even though it is written, they seem to skip over it. But how, I wanna ask you, do you remember when? Do you remember when you wouldn't hear and you wouldn't see what was right in front of you? And it was like a cloud and you believed what you wanted to believe because it's what you wanted. But thank you, Father, that the veil has been rented and you see. So when I read to you, I want you to feel in your spirit what this meant for you if you were not delivered, if you were not called to be where you are in righteousness and to walk a holy stand and to believe in the Most High. Read with me, follow along in verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light 
and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Glory. Hallelujah. Verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Hallelujah. Come on and bless him. Immediately after the tribulation in those days, verse 29, not verse 36, that then tells us of Noah and the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. And that in verse 40, then two shall be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Do you understand? The mass are deceived into believing that verse 40, verse 42, verse 43, verse 44, all of this they believe they will be caught away without the tribulation. Why am I saying this to you? Because it is imperative that the elect remnant know you're not allowed to be deceived. You have been awakened. Your consciousness is awakened. Hallelujah! In verse 41, two women shall be grinding at the mill, and the one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore ye know not what hour your Lord, your Almighty, the highest power, doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. But nevertheless, this is not so. None will know the watch. None will know the hour when the thief shall come. When that hour comes, who will be ready? Who will stand in righteousness? What is it? Is it enough to be saved? Is it enough to call on his name? Salvation is a prerequisite, as we know. But once you have salvation, you must not commit the sin of omission. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come with me. You are not allowed to call on his name only. You're not only allowed to believe that he is the son of the most high. You must do as children. You must be partakers of the covenant. You are not sleeping. You are awakening. And some have been awakened. But I hearken and I say, slumbering Israel, awaken. Because you yet sleep. And there are those who are not of Israel who are awakening and are coming into the household of faith. Hallelujah. And we bless the Father for this. It is not enough to quote scripture. It is not enough to know his name. You can call him Jesus. You can call him Almighty. You can call him Yeshua, Yeshua. Call him what you want. He will recognize those who call on his name by his spirit. And when you know his name and you know his authority and that his authority must abide in you also, then you cannot claim his name and abide in sin. You cannot dare not think that you will be the one taken up and the other left. The ones who will be caught out are the ones who live in the authority of the Yasha, the Yashaya who came, who, do, who did what for us? He redeemed 
the unregenerate man. What is unregenerate? Unsound, ungodly, a creature, unworthy to have the spirit of the most high. When you partake of anything less than what is righteous, what is godly, you are no longer partakers of the covenant. Whether you are of the house of Abraham or not, whether you are a part of Israel or not, if you don't live like the Son, if you don't become as the Father, then you cannot abide in his house in glory. Hallelujah. When I came to you and I shared with you regarding the occult, and I mentioned key phrases and words and terminologies I will not go into right now, but just for the sake of bringing back to your remembrance all the images of demigod worship, of Freemasonry, of the mysticism, of the hidden messages, and the predictive programming that was taking place and the usage of frequencies. And I reminded you that the Holy Prophet had the people of the Most High turn off television years ago because of something that was going to come. And we had to cut it off for several days. There was also the transmission of signals by this government and a mandatory requirement to turn in television sets. For what? How does that even make sense? The veil has been rented from your mind. Think about it. How does it make sense? Why haven't they lifted your vehicles from you? Or anything else from that matter? But the prophet warned us that by way of this medium, they would transmit things, and they have, and studies have proven they have sent subliminal messages while people are watching their programs and commercials. They would send messages to get into their subconscious, to get into their spirit, that a seed would be planted and made manifest later. Words that would trigger them to behave in ways and attitudes or commit acts that they didn't understand themselves why they were committing. This thing the prophet had us to do, and we did it, only to learn almost a decade later to discover documents that prove this very thing, that there is such a thing as the CIA, we know, and there is such a thing as MK Ultra, and the M and the K was two words, two letters used for mind control, playing on the word or the letter mind control why would they need to do mind control because it's about the masses there's so much here that cannot be addressed right now but we went into some heavy things and it freed you from the food that you eat from what you're watching that you're careful about how you go about your day how you interact with government agencies even the officials called police. We know, we know that the citizens, quote unquote, of America, we are not. We have long ago been taught, I'm not an American. I'm of the citizen of the kingdom of Yahweh. Hallelujah. And for the citizens of America and citizens for other nations around the world, because this is a global system, there is an elite, there are powers that be, that work the banking system, that work the music industry, that work, yes, even the so-called churches that are not church. They are devil's haven. They have permeated so that the citizens who think they are citizens are not. They are in fact slaves. They have been given a birth certificate. And when you're free by way of Yeshaya, 
this doesn't apply to you. Nevertheless, you may have one, as we have all been given one. But what it came from and what it was for was not for citizenship. It's for the corporation. And we touched on this. And there's so much to go into that is necessary for you to remember right now because now this information was necessary. A corporation, what does it have to do with you as the holy elect? It's so that you can see the world around you and that you're not pulled in by the snares of the enemy. You don't give away what you don't have to give away. You do what you need to maintain yourself. This is for almost every single nation on the earth. The tentacles of the global elite have touched and reached far and wide for centuries. And they're not going anywhere. The citizens of many nations are employees. And the employees work not just for their country, you thought maybe I would say for their job. They work a job to pay for certain things in their country, but it's for the country to pay their debt back to certain powers that be. And those powers we mentioned were the Vatican and the Queen of England and what she represents and other important so-called families that preoccupy themselves with world domination called the New World Order. What does this have to do with the elect remnant? Who are you? Well, the slaves of the children of Israel. What slaves? Yes. In Egypt, we were slaves. For hundreds of years, we were slaves. And the Most High never faltered at sending us a deliverer. And he delivered us out of the hands of Pharaoh. And he showed us by his mighty hand what would take place and did take place. And nevertheless, despite their moanings and groanings, we have our forefathers to take. And this is where I'm bringing you because now we can enter in. Now we can enter in and you can remember there is a distinction between you and you and you and you. You look like a man. You look like a woman. You look like a boy. You look like a girl. But you are of the house of the elect remnant of Yahuwah. Hallelujah. And there is a difference. And the difference is we have received the Son of the Most High, Yeshua, as our Redeemer. And he came for the legacy of his Father, the Almighty. And we are the children of the Most High. This is his legacy. We are his legacy. And we will not be slaves to the beast system. They cannot have us. They will not have you. They cannot have me. And they certainly will not have our children. Hallelujah. Woo, glory. Come on and bless him. Glory, hallelujah. The legacy of the Father speaks of his persona. Please take your seats. What legacy can the Most High, the creator of all that is and will ever be, have? But his very image, his character, his likeness. This is what I imparted unto you. He will have who and what he wants. And the prophet uttered this in our ears some time ago. And it resounds and will continue to resound until all time. The Father will have who and what he wants. 
And who he wants is his own kind. He wants his legacy. Hallelujah. Glory. This means you cannot by any means think that it's all right to go along with the crowd. You're called to his legacy. How can you walk like them, talk like them, dress like them? Where is the distinction of the legacy? Where is his persona? If you cannot be identified as one of the lights in this world, then where are his children? Where are you? You should be known by the light you bear forth, by your speech, by your thoughts, by your mind. Yes! Hallelujah! To be of the legacy is to be divinely connected. And the only way is through the divine connection by way of Yeshua. And this is powerful that we were taught. Hallelujah. The divine connection of Yeshua to the Father for his people. And this, our spiritual Father gave unto us this meat that we could absorb and take on into our spirit and manifest it in our minds and in our bodies that we know how to speak to the veil. If we are divinely connected, then we must transform into that what? G, D, and A, hallelujah. I am reminding you, brethren, my family, of valuable teachings, giving you insight into this word we are journeying in. It is imperative that God's people, as he is so called by many, Yahuwah's people, live in the spiritual, not by the carnal, not get caught up with the customs of religion. The children, yourselves, all of us, have been exposed to programming to condition us to be like a factory, to want whatever comes out next. Notice the changing of the times, how you too let it influence you. When the next change comes, will you notice it and say, I refuse it? I'm not changing along with that time. Well, you're not keeping up with the fashion, and the fashion's not keeping up with righteousness, so I am not keeping up with the fashion. Hallelujah. I don't care what people think because I'm of the legacy. Hallelujah. I care what the Father Yahuwah thinks. When we say that we love him, we remember the commandment that was asked of Messiah. What is the greatest commandment of all? And the answer is? And the answer is? To love him and to what? Keep his commandments. How can you demonstrate this love if you will not keep all of his commandments? Come with me to Romans chapter 8. This is vitally important. What shall we say then to these things? Verse 31. If God be for us, who can be against us? If the Almighty be for us, who can be against us? What that means to you is it doesn't matter what people think, rightly dividing. It matters if it will cause them to stumble. It matters if they won't see Messiah in your walk. That's when it matters. But what does it matter what they think if what they want to think about you is you're not vain enough, you're not stylish enough, you're not worldly enough, you don't sound like them, you don't talk like them. 
What does it matter then? Then is when it doesn't matter. Let what matters most be of the Father. The persona of the Father must emanate through the Son. When you say and declare, I am a son of the Most High, you have to mean this thing of glory. That it bothers you to pick up anything that contradicts the Most High, that contradicts his word. It is enough that we have to live here in this earth that is contaminated by the wicked ways of the world. It is enough to have to see the evil doings of those citizens of the world. It is enough. Let's not touch what's theirs and make it ours too. Stay away from it. It seems harmless. How harmless is it? It's just an earring. But does that earring now cause you five years later, three years later, to take on their walk, their swag, their maneuver, their speech, and lo and behold, you have lost your way. You need to wake up because when you're called of the household of faith, you don't sound like that music that is not godly. You don't sound like a rapper. You don't sound like a rock star. You don't sound like anything other than godly, holy. So why do these things matter? They matter because they cannot be a part of the legacy. You are an inheritance. And the inheritance means that you have a birthright. And if you have a birthright, be afraid not to disown yourself from the birthright. Hallelujah. Did you get that? Be careful that you do not disown yourself from the birthright that you claim to have. If it's your birthright, hold on to it. Do not abort it. The Father called you, named you of his house, called you his legacy which links us to your inheritance because there's no way you can receive of his legacy unless you are an heir. You're with me now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We are joint heirs with Messiah. And if we are joint heirs with Messiah, then we are partakers of the covenant. Oh, glory to God. Oh, Father, please. Please. Verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of the Almighty's elect? It is the Almighty that justifieth. Who is he, in verse 34, that condemneth? It is Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach that died, yea rather, that is risen again at the right hand of the Almighty who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Messiah? Shall tribu tribulation? Shall the <laughs> glory? Tribulation? Wait. Wait, wait, shall tribulation separate us? You have to understand, we are being made strong. But to get there, we had to peel away. We had to become unlearned to learn. Shall tribulation take away my, my brethren from me? Who will be with us? Who will be with you? Shall they be taken away from you? Who will be with you? My family in Cush, what tribulation will come? Will I see you after the tribulation? Or would you all stand? 
people, would you be shaken like a reed shaken in the wind and destroyed and stamped underfoot by the wicked and carried away by the enemy? There is no time like now, like the present, to stay ready, to make ready, to make haste. There is an urgency in my spirit, and it should be with you to know we're not there yet. We're getting there. And thank you, Father, for sending your son to redeem us back, to divinely connect us, that he is bringing us, that we be that legacy that you want for us. Hallelujah. Who shall separate us from the love of Messiah? Who? Say, not me. No one shall separate me. You have to meet it. From the babes to the elders. No one shall separate us from Messiah. Verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Here the apostle is making it very plain. You cannot read this and not read this and absorb this into your heart what this means have you ever gone through anything that was hard did you come out by faith by the father then you're stronger as we've heard in the testimonies wonderful testimonies Two years not knowing, but knowing. Who hath an ear to hear, let them hear. And understand what this handmaiden said. Two years. They did not know, according to man, that they were delivered. But they knew that deliverance came for their body because the prophet declared it so by the power of the Almighty that all was well. Hallelujah. Glory! And during those two years, where were you? They were going through or they were at rest? Did they have challenge and have to make themselves rest? When did they come to that peace? And when did they know that they would hear the confirmation they didn't know but they settled themselves for two years and finally some it will take longer but this the word is telling you what the apostle wrote who 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 can separate who can separate you when you belong to the father when you're his sons his daughters who but we know who the enemy is. We know the one that comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. And even though you're called, even though you're a son today, you can disown yourself from the kingdom because the enemy is the who. And he can war against your mind. The greatest enemy I once heard a wise man say, is the mind the body has a mind of its own and the mind can be the greatest enemy to the man but what kind of man are you called to be the kind of man that could only be a partaker of the heritage who is of the lineage called the legacy of the most high and as we travel even further into these teachings, we're going to come into it because you have gifts in you 
callings in you to secure you that when you are asked, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, you can say it now, no. Say it with me. Shall tribulation, no. Shall distress, no. Or persecution, no. Or famine, no. Or nakedness, no. Or peril, or sword, no, no. See, those of you who've never been through any hardship, you live in what is maybe called a first world, not a third world. But even in the third world, there is comfort, as it's so called. If you don't know nakedness, you understand nakedness? Nothing much to wear. Exposed to the elements, that means hungry thirsty, naked, nothing. You own, not you, but the person owns nothing. Peril, what is peril? Understand the meanings of the word. It's danger, don't hear and don't hear. Danger, will you encounter danger to your body and still not be separated from Messiah? The answer is no. So if they put a sword to your throat, the answer is no. How do you know? How do you know? Make sure you come to know that you won't. Because right now, the awakening is taking place. Your consciousness now teaches you. Don't get involved in that. Don't listen to this. Turn that off. That's not for my spirit. I don't want you to waste away while you think you're ascending and are not. You cannot be consumed by the cares of life. So, thinking you have to get this done. Meanwhile, this is what's coming. This is what the apostle is saying. This is what's coming. We read in Matthew what Yeshua said, how it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. They will be giving away into marriage. They will be drinking. They will be involved in many vain things. And if they're so preoccupied and so programmed subconsciously that they cannot discern the entrapment of the enemy, then yes, somebody's will be separated by tribulation. Somebody's will be separated by distress and by persecution. And this is heavy. This is not a word that people want to hear. This doesn't make you want to stand up and rejoice. This means you are partakers of a covenant that you have to go through something hard. This is not what is taught in the so-called churches, in the religious houses out there. They are teaching a people lies and deception. They are encouraging them to go to the movie houses and watch movies that are ungodly to teach them a word. How is the word of Yeshua, the Almighty, in that movie, in that show, in that nightclub, in that rap music, just because you use the word Jesus. My Hebrew brothers and sisters, I have such a love for you as I have a love for any soul that wants the most high. I, I want to help. I want to help you and I want to help them. And I love every man that walketh the earth, but I don't love his ways. And if he's not of righteousness, then I hate his ways, but I love him and I want him to change. And I'm saying to you, please, I'm not attacking you. I'm not attacking you and your custom and your religion, whether you're a Hebrew Israelite, whether you're a Jehovah Witness, a Baptist, Catholic, a Seventh-day Adventist, whatever you call yourself, 
Do you not have the Bible? Do you not believe in the Son of the Most High called Jesus? Then just wait, wait. How did man get involved with the Word if not by way of infiltration and influence? And how could that be if not for the Prince of the Air, the one who comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy? You cannot take it lightly just because the masses are doing it that it's all right. It's not all right. It's not all right with the Most High. If it were, then how is it that they killed his son? How is it that they called him everything they could and they gave him up instead of taking the murderer to die on the demigod Tammuz? These are the kind of men that are influenced, that have given themselves over to Satan, ha Satan. But they think in their showings and in their fastings and in their praying that they are so holy when they are not. When I, I gave unto you certain information, it was to awaken you. This so-called Illuminati as it is known and it is is part of a cabal and it is part of a quote-unquote Zionistic Jewish order and it does borrow from other sects and other religions and mysticisms but in the so-called Jewish order there are sins that are allowed to be committed while they put on garments that look holy. There are things that they, they do that I, I don't want to, I don't want to go into right now. But I branch you here. Perhaps we will as we continue and it will be gross to your ears. The Catholic Church and the Vatican are no different and there's no denying this and how people still trust and go to the Roman Catholic or the Catholic. Yes, there are good people, but good people of that order. Look, what are you being taught? This is a religion and God never, the Most High, He never, He never established religion. He never wanted us to be religious, to do anything. He just wanted us to be pure, to be holy, to be steadfast in his ways. This is who he is. What religion is Yahweh? What religion is the Almighty? So I bring it back and I say, who said? that Yahweh is excluding anyone from entering the kingdom. Who, who said that? He didn't say it. Why did Yeshia die on the cross? Yes, he sent us. Yes, he sent for us. He sent his apostles, his disciples, his students to go to the lost sheep of Israel and to go not the ways of the Gentiles or not into the houses of the Samaritans. He did. We are called the children of Israel. We are called, we have a promise. And that promise was given unto Abraham. And we can read it in Genesis. And we can read it throughout the scriptures. What did Abraham do that made the father promise him that his seed would be multiplied in all the earth, that he would hold his children as a peculiar treasure. Yes, there is a favor for the children of Israel, but none who are outside the house of Israel have done what Israel has done. Israel disobeyed the father, and yet he remembers his promise to our forefather. And he sent his son, Yeshaya 
that others would come. But the instructions were, yes, my sons, go not the ways of the Gentiles, but go to the lush. Because they have a right. They have first rights. We have the first right to know who we are. Glory, hallelujah. And we've been given a mandate. And the mandate is to be a royal priesthood, to walk holy, not sound worldly. So how is it that the Hebrew Israelite movement now, as it is known, is being considered a movement when it's not a movement? It is a way of life. Being a Hebrew, when could you ever think that it would ever be associated with worldly attire and cussing and profanity. My brethren, you can be who you are. Be free, be who you are, be who you're called to be. Put off the ways of the world, take off those shackles, take off those chains because it is an enslavement of the world. Don't be trapped. We were made free from slavery. The Father sent a deliverer to deliver the children of Israel out of slavery, not for the children of Israel to put themselves back in bondage. Hallelujah! With the cares of the demigod to worship idols and to take on their ways, to dress like them and be like them. He abhorred it so that he suffered the children of Israel that they would not enter into the promised land. That's how much he hates demigod worship. So how are the children of Israel, if they know who they are, if they are awakening, how are they taking on the worshiping of idols? Don't be baffled because it is idol worship when you worship that music that is not godly. When you talk like that person who is a celebrity and made that speech popular, so now generations of people are speaking in a way that didn't exist 20, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. When you think of Messiah, do you think of him sounding like that? When you come before the court of the Most High, did you ever imagine in your childlike heart, go back with me, being teachable, be childlike. When you were a child, were you only exposed to the world? Wasn't there an area that you knew there was a purity to God, to the Almighty, that you could not conduct yourself any way? How is it that man is careful in the authorities of the earth but cannot be careful when it comes to his son or when it comes to the Most High himself. It is unbecoming. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. Free yourself and free your children. Stay free by being in the bondage of Christ because through him, we died. And in him, we were resurrected. Hallelujah! And we know the power of the word. That we have life eternal because of Yeshua. He came to redeem us back to what once was. And what once was was Adam. And Adam was image. And he was like this. And he was like the father. Because it felt like this. God wanted his image and his likeness. And he called it good. Hallelujah. This is who we are. Go back. He came. And you know that I know that the teachings have unlocked things in all of us from the prophet. We know 
that Messiah is second man, Adam, who came to redeem first man, Adam. It goes beyond that. You know it goes beyond that. We are to be as Adam. We are called as Ben Adam. And for those who don't understand and don't know, that's not taking on Adam's sin. That's taking on the God-like, the spirit of the Most High, the image and the likeness of the immortal, hallelujah, Adam, who the Redeemer came and was resurrected, that we would be resurrected in him, by him, through him, and live. And come to the glorified estate. There is much we can and will, the Father willing, journey into because to be of the inheritance, we are joint heirs, partakers, and it is an abstract notion what you can be partakers of. And then there is the actual physical notion. But how can it be physical when it's spiritual? Because words have life. And if you believe in the word of the Most High and you declare it and you speak to this veil, we know what Messiah came to do to redeem this type of man back to that type of man before the fall so that there would be holiness and a glory and a living and a not dying. Hallelujah. This is the legacy. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, I thank you. Glory.